All right, so what is up guys? Welcome to the third part of the beginner Python tutorial. And in this video, we will be going over the data types that you can use in Python. So as you can see here, we have several different types. And the first one is going to be a text type followed by numeric types, sequence types, mapping types, set types, Boolean types, and binary types. Although we will not be going over the binary types because that is something that's a little bit more complicated and will not be required for a lot of the Python programming that we will be doing on this channel. And the first one I want to go over is the string. So to create a string, all you have to do is create a variable such as apple and assign a text with some quotation marks. And the quotation marks can be single quotation marks or double quotation marks, and that does not really matter. And as you can see, the first variable, which is called apple, will be assigned the string of this as an apple to it. And then to access a single letter from that string, all you have to do is add these brackets. So typing apple at the index of zero will make it print this T. And we can also do, let's uh, write at the index of three. So at the index of three, we will have this S printed because remember that in programming, especially in Python and Kotlin, indexing starts at zero. So instead of one, two, three, it will be zero, one, two, three. So there is four numbers until number three. And then all you have to do is create a print statement with apple and letter. Then let's right click and run our program. And as you can see up here, it will print the string. This is an apple and it will print the fourth letter, which is the index of three. And that is an S. And as I said earlier, that is this S over here. So that's one way to pick certain sections from a string. And that's actually the very basics of a string. It just contains text and can be printed to the console or used for other contexts. Up next, I want to talk about Booleans. And Booleans are used to represent whether a value is true or false. And it's actually as simple as that. So for example, if we create two variables and we assign the first one as engine is on, we can say that the engine is indeed on and assign it to true. Otherwise, we can also create something such as money in wallets. And since I have no money in my wallet, we will go ahead and assign a value of false to it. And when we print these two statements, let's go ahead and click on run. You'll see that the first one will print the value of true and the second one will print the value of false. So you can use that later for some logic statements and expressions. And those are the basics of the Boolean. Up next, we have an int, a float and a complex. So an int stands for integer, which is just a number. So essentially you can just put any number and the compiler will know it's a number because it is an integer. And if you want to add a decimal, you have to turn it into a float, but the compiler will do this automatically. And to turn it into a float, all you have to do is add a dot and that will know that it is a float. And when you do calculations with floats, it will turn everything into decimal numbers. And then finally, if you come from Java or Kotlin or one of those languages, you'll be introduced to this new type, which is a complex. And a complex is essentially just a way of representing imaginary numbers. And we'll be looking at how to use this in a later video. But let's go ahead and click on run to see what happens when we add 23j times three. And over here, you'll see that we will end up with the result of 69J, which is still an imaginary number. And actually, before we move on with the other data types, I want to show you that you can actually find out what kind of type a certain element is just by adding the type function. So we're gonna add type, and we want to find out the type of our example complex. But of course, we need to also wrap this in a pair of parentheses and add the print statement so we can actually see what kind of type it is. So let's go ahead and click on play after we've done that and the compiler will let us know that it is a complex class. So moving on, we have lists, tuples, and ranges. And a list is an ordered sequence of items, very flexible, but these items do not have to be of the same type. So as you can see, I created a list example, and it contains a string, an integer, a complex, and a Boolean. And the program is completely fine with that. And to create a list, all you have to do is create a variable and assign it a pair of brackets with the data types inside. And that will just create a normal list. And as you can see down here, if we click on print the list, we will get all of these printed out. If we print the list at the index of zero, we will only have this printed out. Otherwise, if you want to print a range, such as the range from two to four, you'll see that we will end up with the results of 32J to false. 
So as you can see, when we print the result, the first thing we printed is the entire list, which gave us the whole list of all the items we've included. Then for the second example, this one over here that says list example at the index of zero, we got the string because the string was at the index of zero. And then finally, to print the range that we got between two to four, we got the result of 32J and false because this is from the index two to index four. And you may be asking, well, isn't this actually the index of three? Well, the reason we have to write four there is because it will check what's between the numbers. And this is very crucial because what's between two to four is two and three. And four is excluded when we make these kind of calculations. But moving on, next we have the mutable list, which means you can actually change the values inside the list. So let's just pretend that from the example above, we want to change this string to the text apple. All we have to do is call our string, this one over here, and call at which index we want to change the item. So at the index of zero, we want to change that item with the term apple. And as you can see, when we print the new list, it will turn this list to a string. And when we go to our console, you'll see right here that it says new list, and it will successfully switch out the text at the index of zero with the text of Apple. And up next, we have this new type called tuple. And a tuple is the same thing as a list, but you're not allowed to change any of the contents that are inside. And the way you can create a tuple is just by using a pair of normal parentheses. So as you can see, for a normal list, we have the brackets, but for the tuple, we have a pair of parentheses. So just keep in mind that these contents cannot be changed, and it is in fact an immutable list. And finally, we have a range which is used to generate a range of numbers. So for example, if we create a range example and we give it the range of 10, it will create 10 values all the way up to the value of 10. So when we print the range example to the console, you'll see that we will receive the range of zero to 10. And that this is actually called under the hood because when we inserted 10 here, it automatically places the zero as the starting point for us and puts it up to 10. But if you want to, for example, put a different value, you can also make it start from five. And with that, let's go ahead and click on run. And you'll see that it will only generate five values starting at five. So just writing 10 called zero under the hoods and allows the program to continue with creating the range. And finally, if we print the list of the range example, we will get all of the numbers inside the range printed to the console. Up next, we have the dictionary data type, and this creates a map for variables. The way it works is, first of all, you create a variable, and then you assign it a pair of parentheses, and inside here, you first create a name for what you want to use as the key, and then you can assign a value to that key. And of course, remember to add the colon in between, because this is how you can map the name of even to the variable of name. And the same thing goes for this age, we created a key called age and it will have the value of 36. And these can be separated by a comma. And when we print what type this is, you'll see that we'll get the type of dictionary printed. And then if you actually want to use these values, all you have to do is call your variable such as dictionary and insert the key of what you want to get the value for. So let's go ahead and click on run and see what happens. So the first thing we get is the class of dictionary because we wanted to find out what type this dictionary variable was. So it told us it was a dictionary. And then when we printed the dictionary name plus a empty space plus the dictionary age, which of course we had to pass to a string because you cannot just print an age as a string, we got the result of even and the age of 36. And finally, we're gonna go over two more data types that we will be using in this series. And that is the set data type and the frozen set data type. So a set is an unordered collection of unique items and it can be defined by using these curly brackets. So this is an example of a set. Unordered means that indexing will have no meaning, which means if you want to find out what position something's at, you won't be able to do it by using the same thing we used earlier, such as we used for a list example. So list example at the index of zero will do nothing in a set. And if you want to add new items to the set, all you have to do is call dot add and add whatever you want to to the set. But keep in mind that if you add the same thing twice to a list, it will only add one of them, such as in this example list, I added 
carrots twice, and this will not give us the output of two carrots. It will only give us one carrot. So just to show you what I mean, let's go ahead and click on run and let's open this up a bit. So as you can see, the first thing we printed to the console was what kind of type it was. And the first thing we received was a class of type set. Then we decided to add an item to our list, which is I added this to the list, which you can see was successfully added over here once we printed the statement down over here. Now let's go over what a frozen set is. So a frozen set, on the other hand, is immutable, which means they cannot be changed and only accessed. And that means that if we create a list of numbers such as one, two, three, four, five, and we turn it into a frozen set, we will not be able to change anything inside the frozen set. So for example, if we change the frozen set example at the index of zero, we will not be allowed to assign anything new. So let's assign that so let's assign it the value of apple. You'll see that it will not allow us to do this. But for a fake list, we will still be allowed to add these items, such as at the index of zero, we want to change the number one to, to an apple. And of course, we need to print the fake list immediately under. So when we go ahead and run the program, you'll see that the list was able to be changed, but the frozen set is something that's sturdy and that can be accessed, but is not allowed to be changed. And you can do the same thing for a dictionary because a dictionary is a list after all, except it contains key value pairs. So you can definitely call frozen set on that and that will stop it from being changed in case you want to make sure that a certain data set remains the same. And with that being said, that's actually going to conclude all of the basic data types that we have to go over and in the next couple of videos, we will actually be using these data types to create small programs and small lines of code. So now we can get started with some of the more interesting features. But uh, with that being said, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.